Long ago in ancient India, there lived a strong and wealthy king named Vikram. He had many enemies who were jealous of his success and wanted his throne. Among these foes was a rich merchant named Surya. He was determined to bring down the king and take his place. Surya was tricky and used his dirty tricks to accomplish his goals. One day, Surya gathered his advisors and asked them for ideas to destroy the king. One advisor suggested hiring an assassin to kill him. Another said they should spread lies to make people think badly of him. Someone else suggested bribing his loyal soldiers to turn against him. However, Surya thought these plans were too dangerous and might backfire. Then, a wise old man who had been listening spoke up. He shared four ways to defeat an enemy. The first was to physically kill them. The second was to ruin their reputation. The third was to make their friends not trust them anymore. The fourth was to control their mind. Surya found these ways interesting and asked the old man to explain further. So the old man began explaining. He said that physically killing an enemy is the most straightforward approach, but also the riskiest one, because if you fail, your enemy will be more determined to beat you. The second way is spreading false stories to make others think badly of them. By spreading untrue rumors and lies about your enemy, you can influence public opinion against him and weaken his support system. But this tactic carries dangers since your lies could be discovered and your own reputation could be damaged. The third way is to create discord among your enemy's allies. By sowing seeds of mistrust and suspicion among your enemy supporters, you can weaken their loyalty and persuade them to turn against him. But this method also requires great skill and cunning, as you must be careful not to be caught in the act. The fourth way is to conquer your enemy's mind. By using psychological tricks and manipulation, you can make your adversary doubt himself and lose the will to fight. This fourth method of mind control is the most effective and subtle of all because it requires you to comprehend your adversary's vulnerabilities and fears. Zuria was amazed with old man wisdom and asked him to teach him how to control his enemy's mind. The old man agreed and the first thing the old man taught Zuria was to control someone's thoughts. You need to first understand your own mind. The old man said, our minds are like wild horses that need calming. If you allow your mind to be ruled by anger, greed or fear, you will never be able to control your enemy's mind. The second lesson was, you need to understand your enemy's thoughts as well. Know their strengths and weaknesses, what they fear and what they like. And then only you can use this knowledge to your advantage. The third lesson the old man gave Surya was how to use psychological tricks to influence his adversary's thoughts. He said, there are many tricks you can use to influence your adversary's thoughts, including flattery to stroke his ego, fear to make him doubt himself, guilt to make him feel ashamed of himself, and compassion to appeal to his sense of humanity. However, you must be careful not to use too many tricks, otherwise your enemy will see right through it. Surya paid close attention to the old man's advice and started putting it into practice. He began by sending gifts and flattery to the king, praising his virtues and accomplishments. He also began spreading rumors about the king's enemies, making them appear weak and foolish to the public. He even managed to create discord among the king's allies by sowing seeds of distrust and suspicion among them as well. As time went on, it appeared that Surya's intentions were succeeding and the king's reputation and support base started to weaken. But Surya wasn't satisfied. He wanted to control the king's mind and to make him doubt himself and lose his will to fight. So Surya went to the king's palace and humbly begged for forgiveness, confessing his sins and expressing his regret for his previous actions. He even offered to serve the king faithfully and help him in any way he could. The king was taken aback by Surya's sudden change of heart. He knew Surya was up to something, but he still decided to give him a chance to prove his sincerity, so he accepted Surya's offer and made him one of his most trusted advisors. As Surya worked closely with the king, he started to see things from a different perspective and realized that his desire for power and wealth had blinded him. He witnessed the misery and poverty of people everywhere 
and had a profound sense of compassion for them. He also observed the wisdom and compassion of the king and was motivated by his example. One day, Surya asks a question to the king. He said, You have shown me great kindness and compassion even though I was your enemy. How can you be so kind and compassionate to someone who tried to destroy you? The king grinned and replied, I'm not kind and compassionate because I'm weak or foolish. I'm kind and compassionate because it is the right thing to do. The greatest enemy is not the one who attempts to destroy us physically. The greatest enemy is the one who attempts to destroy us spiritually. When we confront hatred with love, violence with peace, and greed with generosity, we not only overthrow our adversaries' minds, but also our own. The king's words deeply affected Surya, and he realized he had been wrong, always wanting power and money. He decided to change and help people instead. In the end, Surya realized that the true enemy is not something outside of us, but something inside of us. It is the enemy of ignorance, greed and hatred that leads us away and causes us to suffer. But when we conquer our own mind, when we cultivate compassion and wisdom, we can overcome any obstacle. He also became a devoted disciple of Gautam Buddha. Buddha taught him the four ways to destroy one's enemy without using physical violence, but rather by cultivating compassion, wisdom, and inner peace. The moral of the story is that real victory comes from developing inner peace wisdom and compassion rather than using physical might or material wealth. Gautam Buddha's teachings remind us that our greatest enemy is not outside of us, but inside of us in the form of ignorance, greed, and hatred. When we overcome these inner enemies, we can overcome any obstacle and find true happiness and fulfillment.